My name is Soner Çapdai. I'm the director of Turkish research program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy and author of forthcoming Erdogan's Empire, Turkey and Politics of the Middle East. Turkey's decision to purchase Russian-made S-400 missile defense system uh, is about to cause what could be the greatest crisis in U.S.-Turkish relationship in nearly four decades. S-400 uh, is uh, a missile defense system that is built to shoot down uh, NATO's latest uh, generation of fighter planes known as F-35. So the Congress objects to sale of F-35 planes to Turkey and it also wants Turkey to be kicked out of the F-35 consortium if Turkey goes ahead and buys the S-400 system. At the same time there's another set of sanctions called CATSA. This targets any company or any country that does significant purchase or transaction with certain Russian companies and the Russian company that makes S-400 missile defense system is already sanctionable under Katsa regime. So Turkey could face two sets of sanctions if it purchases the S-400 system. My fear is that if the U.S.-Turkish relationship were to crash today, it would take even longer time for the relationship to be reset and perhaps uh, that reset uh, could never come. This is because Turkey's foreign policy has changed significantly since the Cold War. Turkey is now surrounded by adversarial powers including Russia but Russia at the same time is in a relationship with Turkey and Syria where Turkey and Russia are increasingly brokering ad hoc deals. When Russia deployed troops, Turkey from the very beginning backed anti-Assad rebels. So Turkey and Russia were in a proxy war. When Russia deployed troops in 2014, that made a Turkish-Russian uh, ru accidental run-in very likely. Turkey shut down a Russian plane that had violated airspace from Syria. In response, Putin slapped severe sanctions on Turkey, economic sanctions, threatened Turkey with military action. At the time, the Turkish-Russian relationship took a nosedive, but entered the failed coup of 2016 in Turkey. Putin saw in the coup a, a wonderful, a masterful opportunity to drive a wedge between Turkey and the United States. Putin used this opportunity. He not only told Erdogan that he would accept Erdogan's apology for the shootdown of Russian plane in November 2015, but he also offered to Erdogan to sell him a missile defense system. Turkey had earlier approached the United States to buy a missile defense system called Patriot, but uh, when Turkey buys uh, weapons from the United States, it always comes with a request for technology transfer and local production. The U.S. had said no to this. Putin took advantage of this fact. After that, Erdogan realized that Putin called the shots in Syria and not Obama, and he started to go to Putin for deals in Syria, realizing that his ally, the United States, is working with Turkey's sworn enemy, the PKK, or rather the PKK Syrian branch, YPG, and that the United States would not deliver him security against YPG. And uh, Putin took advantage of this opportunity as well. Maybe Turkish President Erdogan realizes that he's made a bad decision by committing to buy the S-400 system. Regardless of how justified his decision was at the moment, he wanted to buy a missile defense system with some technology transfer. The U.S. said no to him. Russia said yes, maybe. The Russian offer cost less than the U.S. offer. Uh, and also, uh, in return for committing to buy this missile defense system from Russia, Putin allowed Erdogan to go into Syria and to undermine the YPG. So why can't President Erdogan climb out of this? He cannot, because he knows that if he cancelled the deal, Putin would ask him to vacate Syria. That would result in the creation of a, a state-controlled or state-led controlled in northern Syria run by People's Protection Units, YPG, which is connected to the PKK. Turkey's sworn enemy would establish a state uh, enveloping Turkey from the south for nearly 400 miles. So Erdogan knows that if he says no to Putin, that is what will happen. Putin has other levers. Uh, there is one last area of Syria controlled by rebels called Idlib province. Uh, that has a population of nearly 3 million civilians. Uh, if Putin started a massive campaign against Idlib, that would st uh, start a, a flow of refugees into Turkey, 3 million people who would overwhelm Turkey. Uh, there would also be a flow of jihadist fighters, uh, tens of thousands crossing into Turkey, uh, posing a grave threat. I believe in the, the us turkish relationship, and I hope that this crisis can be averted. I think this is also a mature relationship that goes back 70 years. It's also a very important relationship for the United States. Uh, Turkey borders Iran, Iraq, Syria, formerly ISIS-held territories, and across the Black Sea, Russia. Whatever U.S. policies are regarding those five countries and entities, they're much easier 
much less costly and much less cumbersome with Turkey on board. Uh, there is a pretty a severe anti-Turkey mood on the Hill right now in the U.S. Congress. Uh, some of it has got to do with the authoritarian pivot of Turkish President Erdogan. Some of it is linked to a simple anger that he is entering into a transaction with a Russian entity that is sanctioned by U.S. law. So the issue then is, what does President Trump do? Does he rise above all of this? Uh, he might. Uh, the Department of Defense is under him. But he can do very little against the Congress. And so uh, although President Trump might promise to President Erdogan that things will be fine, Turkey would still face congressional sanctions. There's some talk in this town that President Trump will visit Turkey soon. I think that would be a good step uh, because Tur President Erdogan and President Trump together can find ways to mitigate this crisis.